Good day and welcome back to the Hopkins Demonstration Forest. This is part eight of what is a forest. And now that we've talked a little bit about some of the guides that you can use to identify some of the different plants and trees here in the forest, I wanted to revisit something I did in the spring, and that is to talk about the different parts of a plant, in this case a tree, and um, go through that kind of in review again. So. Uh, first off, let's uh, talk about what type of tree this is, and um, you can't really see up to the top, so if I do some scavenging and look on the ground, I'll find some branches, uh, some cones. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you probably use some, uh, again, I always pick an easy one. Uh, you can see the uh, very large pointed buds on this conifer with inch to two inch long needles, that cone with bracts, uh, looking at the bark on this tree as well. Uh, some of the furrows. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty easy guess out here when it's a conifer. Uh, it's a Douglas fir. So we're going to be looking inside this Douglas fir. And in order to take a peek inside, uh, I use a special tool called an increment core. Now an increment core is basically a, a three-part simple tool that has a hollow drill inside. The carrying case becomes also the handle. And then this little metal device is the spoon. And I'll tuck that up here for right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look inside this tree. A lot of times people say, oh, you're gonna look inside a tree or you've seen that tree cookie. And you're gonna say, yeah, count the rings. You know, every ring that you can count is a year's worth of growth. And you can tell how old a tree is. And that's kind of nice. But really, when we like to look inside a tree, we like to count uh, not just the rings, but see how those rings are growing year to year and not look at the whole life of the tree, but just the last five or 10 years. Because those five or 10 years are something we can see you know, what's going on. It's kind of like doing a health checkup of a tree. So you might have uh, some rings that are going really good and all of a sudden a really short ring. And that short ring might indicate that there was a lack of one of those resources a tree needs. What does a tree need if we remember? Sun, water, carbon dioxide, CO2 from the air, and the nutrients and soil uh, that it sends its roots out into. So those four things, it's like, well, which one do we probably not have? And, and here in Western Oregon, um, usually that, that issue is water. So we might have had a drought. But if we start seeing uh, year after year, the rings are slowing down, we know that tree, it's, it's not just uh, a one-time thing an environmental change uh, that happened uh, you know, briefly like a drought, there's probably something going on, competition, other plants, something in this forest, the stand, a condition that is, that is putting a stress on that tree or plant and probably on the others around it. Uh, and often that's competition. So let's take a look inside and um, I'll take a core of this tree. And as I do that, I'll talk about the five different parts. Now we remember this is a tree made of wood. Wood is mostly water and cellulose. Cellulose is carbon. Uh, and we like some of this wood, especially from Douglas Firks, it's nice and strong. So it does take a little bit of work to get that in, but once it's in, it's pretty easy. So let's talk about that first layer that I went into uh, before getting into the, the main part of the tree. And that first layer is the bark. Uh, pretty easy to, to, to see. Sometimes that bark is very thick. Sometimes it's very thin, but the bark serves a, a primary purpose of protecting the tree. Keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. They may want to get after some of that good stuff. So insects, disease, uh, it's basically, if you think about it, it's like the skin on our body. It protects. So layer one, the bark, and then there's two layers that are just inside that bark. And, and we commonly refer to those in forestry, that, that sometimes a little different in a biology uh, setting but uh, that next layer is called the phloem, P-H-L-O-E-M. The phloem, or often referred to also as the inner bark, is the uh, layer that transports the sugars that go uh, from the needles, the leaves, uh, down and around the tree from that process of photosynthesis. So the phloem transports the, transports the energy, that sugar that is created in the leaves and needles. Just inside that phloem layer, is a, a third layer called the cambium, C-A-M-B-I-U-M. The cambium is where new growth occurs. That's where that new ring is put on every year in the case of a, a tree. 
uh, or new cell development happens. So those are the three layers. And then once we get into that uh, main part of the tree, the wood, um, the cellulose, the carbon uh, in that tree that's being stored, we have the fourth layer. Uh, and we call that oftentimes the sapwood, uh, S-A-P-W-O-O-D, sapwood. Um, also referred to as the xylem, X-Y-L-E-M, xylem, and the living xylem. That sapwood or living xylem is what connects out to the roots. Uh, it is pulling the water from the ground, the nutrients from the ground, up through the tree, uh, and that's flowing through the sapwood. And the last layer, the fifth one, which goes to the center of the tree, uh, is called the heartwood. Now the heartwood was once living xylem or sapwood, but it no longer flows water, cells have shut off, and uh, it now is it's a lot stronger, and it provides a structural support for the tree. So we have the bark protects, the phloem moves the energy in the sugars created in photosynthesis, the cambium, new cell development and growth occurs there. We have the sapwood or xylem, pulls the water from the roots and nutrients, and then the last one, the heartwood. So I'll try to get just a little bit past the center of this tree, and I take the spoon, slide it in, hopefully we can get a good core out of this. And extract out that core. And I will try to hold that up there so it can get in some focus and you can see it. Uh, you can see right here uh, a little bit of the bark. Now what often happens is that bark breaks off and uh, where the phloem and cambium are. Tuck that away. And if I pick this off carefully, try to locate the center. You often look where the rings kind of make a shift or a change. Center of the tree is right there. So if I hold that close enough to the camera, we can start here on the outside, kind of review those uh, layers now that we can see the inside of the tree, but the bark, which I took off, uh, and then the phloem and cambium layer. But then you can see right through here, it's a little lighter color. That's the sapwood. That's that living xylem where the water's flowing up. And then we have from the uh, sapwood, you notice a change of color. It runs to about where I think I got the center about right there uh, is the heartwood. So we can look at this tree and count the rings. Again, right a rope, make sure I locate the center in it. I just got off a little bit. Uh, a little hard to see sometimes when you come in at a, at a bit of an angle, but there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So not going, growing too bad, actually growing pretty, pretty good. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then about right here we go, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So about 40 years. Um, I probably missed another one there. Pretty quick count. Uh, I'd say I probably missed more than I, I uh, counted, so just a little over 40 years old. Um, what I can tell from this core is it was growing really well, and then all of a sudden, uh, somewhere about 15, 16 years, it started slowing down. Uh, and recently, I need to probably also get a, a magnifying glass out to see some of those, uh, really slowed down. So that tells me that something is going on in this stand. And if I were to look around and spin the camera around a little bit, you notice there's actually quite a few other trees uh, in similar size. Some a little larger, some a little smaller. Uh, I do know out here at Hopkins that there was a, an effort to do a lot of tree planting uh, in some of the stands, because uh, some were harvested, some were kind of rehabbed about 40 years ago. Uh, and this was one of them. And uh, so, while not growing too, too bad, uh, this tree right here, it, it is uh, probably needing something. And my guess is it's probably not water, because if I spun you around, you'd actually see we're just, just down from our parking lot, which receives quite a bit of uh, water uh, when it rains. Uh, even in the summer, it'll get a little bit of a runoff. So these are well-fed trees for water. So it, it's probably that other key part a tree needs, uh, usually more important here on the western side of Oregon, and that is sunlight. So uh, we have a little competition going on 
but uh, you know the tree is still looking up at it. it it's healthy um, could use a little extra sun but uh, outside of that uh, not doing too bad um, but uh, we might want to consider some management uh, choices out here so anyways kind of off the topic of uh, looking inside a tree but, but that's why we do it uh, we do it because uh, we don't just necessarily want to know the age we're really curious to see you know how's that tree been doing lately uh, can we help it out so uh, remember those five parts uh, again the bark protects the phloem moves nutrients cambium growth that uh, sapwood or uh, often referred to as the living xylem and then the uh, heartwood or the uh, dead xylem uh, material that was once um, the sapwood so five layers and uh, Hope uh, that was uh, kind of a quick review or maybe a new, uh, a new topic for you. But uh, we're going to be getting into looking at some uh, more details about the forest uh, and get down to some more specifics uh, as we move on with these videos. And hope you're uh, enjoying them. And as always, please share and uh, give me some feedback so I know what you're looking for. Um, like them, comment if you can. Uh, always looking for new ideas. So uh, beautiful day out here. Um, can't get any better for... Uh, for our early December day here at Hopkins. Hope to see you real soon out here and uh, you get out there and enjoy. Thanks a lot.